Hello and welcome to NDTV Profit. You're watching Earnings Edge, and my guest today is from Tata Steel, ATV Narendran, MD and CEO of the company. Mr. Narendran, thank you very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. Uh, you know, let me t uh, ask you the first question. You know, good set of uh, numbers coming in, good EBITDA coming in there. Can you take us uh, through the demand uh, scenario which is there within India, domestic in domestic market, and then Europe? Demand has been uh, pretty strong in India. If you see the steel consumption in India. Uh, so far this year, it's grown at around 10% compared to the previous year. So we are finally seeing steel consumption grow at a rate faster than the GDP growth rate. It was expected given the focus uh, and the spend on infrastructure. Globally, demand has still uh, been a bit fragile, uh, particularly in Europe. Uh, the European uh, continent is still recovering from the aftermath of COVID and the Ukraine war, and which is ongoing. So uh, there the demand growth has not been so great, but uh, over the last few weeks, we've started seeing prices creeping up in Europe because of the fact that uh, material which used to flow through the Red Sea and Suez Canal has got disrupted because of the... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've seen that in the last quarter, uh, some form of happening in the uh, raw material prices, coking prices, coal prices have gone up by 20% and equivalently, uh, equivalent uh, increase in iron ore prices as well. Is that going to have an impact uh, going forward for you? So iron ore doesn't have an impact uh, for us in India because we have our own iron ore. But in Europe, yes, we buy iron ore. Coking coal has an impact for us both in Europe and in India. Coking coal and iron ore prices have been going up globally because the Chinese steel production is still strong. Uh, so they're buying the raw materials that they normally buy, if not more. And because they are producing more but consuming less, they are exporting more, and which is why international steel prices have got impacted. So it impacts us uh, in the sense that the spreads reduce, but we do see, like I said, steel prices responding to rising raw material prices and hence creeping up uh, in uh, Europe and, of course, in India as well. How do you see Chinese exports uh, scenario? Because they've been exporting 7 to 8 million tons per month. Um, and... Uh, I think that's going to increase going forward as China China looks at a soft landing or you know in a gradual build up of demand. Uh, how do you see that impacting prices uh, in 2024? So I do believe that uh, it's pretty close to the peak. If you see, it's been uh, at this level for the last few months. It has not gone beyond. It went slightly beyond eight, maybe in July or August, and after that, it's uh, been slightly below eight. Uh, obviously, that's higher than we would like it to be. I think uh, ideally China should be exporting around 5 million tons and that keeps the balance uh, in the global markets. Uh, so I do expect them to be at this level for a few more months uh, and then either they'll have to cut production because the profitability of the Chinese steel companies is not great or demand in China has to pick up and uh, help them in the profitability. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I look at your consolidated EBITDA per ton of 8,800 8, odd, uh, that's a good number c comparing uh, quarter on quarter and year on year. Um, is there a, a headwind to this uh, EBITDA per ton coming in because of uh, glo global uh, one demand uh, being s suppressed and second raw material prices inching up? No, I do believe this will actually improve because uh, uh, we've had a few bad quarters in Netherlands because we had only one out of the two blast furnaces operating. The other one was down for relining. That blast furnace is coming back to production uh, next week. Uh, so we do expect the volumes to grow in uh, Netherlands and hopefully Netherlands over the next few quarters will come back to certainly the production levels that we've seen in the past and we'll also start seeing the negative become positive. So that will certainly improve our overall EBITDA per ton. UK continues to be a challenge. The restructuring there will at least take six to nine months from now. Uh, so the benefits of the restructuring in terms of cost will be visible to us only uh, next year this time. Mm -hmm. India, uh, demand continues to be strong, so we expect the numbers to be quite resilient. Mm -hmm. uh, in the UK front, uh, what I understand is that you will have to shut down the furnace uh, so that you can do the transition to a more uh, you know, green furnace in that sense. Um, and what is the kind of impact that you're going to take uh, because of the complete shutdown because you won't be able to run the furnace along with uh, the you know change in uh, uh, change in the operation and the technology that you're bringing in? So uh, in, uh, we've already impaired the assets, and that is why we took the losses in the last quarter. Uh, so from an operations point of view, as we wind down the furnaces, we will also bring in steel, uh, either from India or Netherlands or from other sources, 
so that we can keep our downstream units running and our customers uh, serviced uh, so that they don't feel the disruption that we are seeing at the back end as we change from one process route to another. So operationally, uh, we expect the volumes to be a bit lower, uh, but at a more optimal level as we transition to the new electric car furnace, which will come up in 2027. Cost-wise, yeah. yeah. I'm saying, are Sorry. you providing any uh, support prices, uh, su support, uh, you know, uh, for the employees who will be idle at that point in time? Yeah, so that is a conversation going on with the uh, unions. We have said that uh, the expectation is uh, we will have a reduction of about uh, 2,500 within the next 18 months. So that's a discussion going on with the unions uh, currently. And is there any cost attached to it? Have you come out with a, uh, what kind of one-time cost that would be there because of that? It is all part of the 1.25 billion uh, pound plan that we announced for the transformation of UK. Mm -hmm. uh, what about Netherlands? Because I understand you are in touch with the Netherlands uh, government, uh, Dutch government as well, in the, uh, for a negotiated package there. For, for uh, where are we on that? Uh, and uh, you know. And what uh, what time frame do we have for that uh, you know restructuring happening uh, for through the Netherlands unit? So Netherlands, a conversation is going on with the government. Uh, they have recently had an election, so we are waiting for the new government to form, which may take a few months. And uh, once the new government is formed, we hope to take this conversation to a conclusion. Uh, sir, uh, how do you plan to scale, scale up the domestic production? Because Kalinga Nagar is also coming up, coming up and is going to be up on a phased manner. So by when do we see the entire 5 million ton coming up from Kalinga Nagar? So Kalinga Nagar, many facilities have already been commissioned and the rest will get commissioned in the next uh, 12 months or so. So the blast furnace will get commissioned or will get uh, completed in the next few months and uh, commissioning the production should start soon thereafter. So by uh, we will see some volume benefits in the next financial year we will give you the exact guidance when we do the next quarter's results but over the next two years you will see the uh, volumes ramp up to five million tons which is the capacity that we are setting up mm -hmm. uh, you're also looking at a consolidation of the entire india arms uh, you've done uh, swap ratios have already been announced for that once the entire consolidation comes into play, how is it going to work for you on the ground level, uh, especially downstream and from uh, various other segments, which uh, many of the units, uh, you know, cater to? Yeah, so this is part of our simplification journey, uh, where we add a number of subsidiaries, some listed, some not listed, and we are merging it into Tata Steel. We had said last year, when we started that we will complete the process during the year. I think most of it is complete. Most of the companies, I think, with the exception of TRF, have already gone through. Uh, so TRF is the only one which is left in that sense of the term, which also will happen over the next few months. Uh, with this, obviously, all of them will become divisions in Tata Steel. Uh, even today, we have a tubes division, a wires division. We have multiple divisions in Tata Steel. So they will have that similar structure. They will all be divisions of Tata Steel. So the focus will be there on their markets, their customers, the bottom line. But uh, we will uh, not be incurring unnecessary costs just because they exist as a separate legal entity or as a listed company. What is the kind of synergies that are going to come in because of that? I think we, when we announced this restructuring, we had said that there's about 2,000 crores of synergy benefits coming out of it. And all with, the companies put together. The, many of them already being integrated into Tata Steel. Have you started getting that synergies? Yes, it's early stage because most of them have uh, started coming in in the last three months and over the next three months. So start seeing the benefits from next year. You have an aggressive plan uh, of uh, doubling your capacity. Uh, you know, can you take us through how do you want to do it, at what level, and uh, which are the segments that you're focusing as as you move towards that? I think what we said in the past is the opportunity exists for us to grow Kalinganagar, which is currently at 3 to 16 million tons, because we have almost 3,500 acres uh, of land available there. The first phase is, or rather the second phase is moving from 3 to 8. The phase after that will take it from 8 to 13. So uh, the plans are being developed and we will discuss with our board. Uh, the other opportunity for us is the Nilachal acquisition, which we did, which is already running at 1 million tons, the full rated capacity. Uh, first stage, we will take it to 5 million tons and thereafter you can take it to 10 million tons. Then in uh, the Bhushan plant in Miramandli, we are already at full capacity at 5 million. We think we'll take it to about six and a half million in the first step. And after that, you can take it to 10 billion. So these are the growth opportunities and existing sites that we have. 
In addition, we are setting up electric car furnace facilities. The first one is being set up in Ludhiana, and we will set up uh, subsequent ones in the south and west as well. So the uh, opportunity is there. If you add up all these numbers, including Jamshedpur, 11 million, uh, you will see that uh, we can cross 40 million, but we need to face it in a manner that uh, uh, you know we are comfortable with, our board is comfortable with, and of course our balance sheet uh, uh, is uh, you know continues to be robust and resilient. How do you see your cash flows, uh, you know, helping you in uh, reaching that 40 million target? Uh, will you be able to get enough cash flows because currently your net debt is around 77,000 crores? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, how do you plan to do that? Uh, so, you know, the India business, if you see the numbers, India business typically has very strong cash flows. And as the India business grows, it will generate enough cash flows to take care of most of this growth. We also believe that uh, even if we stick to a net debt to uh, EBITDA target of two, we can still finance uh, these growth plans. How do you plan to bring down the net debt to EBITDA? Because currently it's a 3.23. It's uh, your target is to bring down to below two and a half. Uh, so, you know, uh, is there a way to deleverage some of the debt as well? Partly deleverage and also we expect the EBITDA to improve as uh, the Netherlands operations comes back to profit. Uh, and uh, how do you want to deleverage that? Uh, is there equity raising uh, which you may have to do? No, no. I think uh, deleveraging through generating the cash flows from the business and as a Kaliganagar expansion comes, we will generate uh, more cash flows which can help us deleverage. Overall, when you reach the 40 million from the current capacity, what is the kind of capex that you will have to spend over a period of time, Mitch? I think uh, too early to give you a number because uh, that is being worked out. But typically, you will see that in steel business, uh, it is anything from four to 6,000 crores uh, per million tons. OK. And uh, that entirely will be done through uh, cash flow currently? That is our expectation. And this is spread over what is it's a five year target or ten year target that you will be able to do it, or it's you're going to pace it with the cash flow. We'll pace it with the cash flow. Okay. Uh, my final question to you is, sir, uh, you've seen demand sluggish in the European markets uh, with UK and Netherlands being big uh, units for you. How do you see demand revival happening? By when do you see the revival happening there? So Europe, you know, is not. Uh, really going to be a growth market. What we are expecting to see is demand go back to the levels that we've seen in the past. Uh, so, you know, so it, that's why you're not adding capacity there. There the focus is on transforming existing capacity to greener process routes. Uh, so there will be some sort of revival uh, if the war in Ukraine comes to an end and there is reconstruction there. Uh, but I also see that a uh, lot of manufacturing activity which got impacted by high energy prices over the last uh, year or so, uh, is slowly coming back to normal because energy prices have dropped down to long-term levels. So we do see a revival of economic activity. If you see the uh, forecast for European GDP growth, uh, you know, this year is expected, this calendar year is expected to be better than last year, and the next calendar year is expected to be even better than this year. So we will see a gradual recovery of economic activity, not significant growth. Mr. Narendra, it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us on Edge. Uh, Thank you. Edge.